I showed you how to write the best resume, I told you what not to do, and a month or so ago I asked all of you to send me your own resume so I can critique them. Well, today is that day. Thank you to everyone who submitted a resume. Unfortunately, we can't get through everyone's resumes, otherwise we'd be here all day. But what I did was I sent the folder to my brother, who then shortlisted 10 resumes that cover the entire spectrum from okay resumes, to good resumes, to almost perfect resumes. So if you don't see your resume in this video today, no worries, just match it to one of the resumes I talk about, take that feedback, and then improve your resume. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's get right to it. Cool, so general vibe looks pretty good. It's nicely filled out, not too much white space, so makes it feel like this person knows what they're doing to have enough experience. Let's start from the very top. Little formatting stuff that is a little annoying. You know, there should be spaces here and here. They use numbers for months, which is not bad, but it makes me think. I have to be like, what is the eighth month or the ninth month? Just write August or AUG or September or whatever. They also have a number here, 85% which is good, but it doesn't really tell me what that means. You have to give me context. Is 85 good? Is it bad? In the US, it would be a B, but maybe if the top score was a 90, then this is pretty good. We have an entire section here for coursework, uh, but this could all really be one sentence. We don't need so much space and bullet point. We also have links, which are good. I'm sure this is clickable, but then we have this underlined, but I'm not really sure if that's a link. So only underline things if they're gonna be links or at least be consistent in that. I like that stuff is bolded. That's good. Again, maybe just put the months here. And I'm usually not a fan of just one line over here. If you're going to have a section, add one to two lines. One line makes it feel like, I don't know, is it really that important? So maybe only put stuff that you have enough stuff to say about. This is actually... I think the same vibe as my own resume, so maybe I'm a little biased, but I like that. Nice heading, nice one line over there. We got the education over here, it looks good. Again, what does this mean? The CGPA, what is it out of? Is it out of nine out of 10? You have to give me some context. Same thing here with this number, you know, what does that mean? So we have a bunch of coursework. You know, I like to put where you were like a TA or anything for any of this stuff. So maybe with an asterisk mention how you were involved. If you were, if not, that's okay. A little bit weird. You see how there's like a space between the bullet and the first letter? I, I don't know. I don't think you need that space. Same with the bullets on this side too. So maybe, you know, look into that. You don't have to say you're a fresh graduate. Don't give them reasons to disqualify you. They'll know that if they can tell by your graduation date. So, you know, you don't have to. Cool, so we have a nice, so you're using the actual months. I like that. You got back end. cool. You got some projects. Okay, cool, cool. Very nitpicky. I don't think you need like a space between here. Uh, and I'm assuming that front end is for Goldman Sachs, right? And this back end is for... So you don't need this. So again, white space, don't waste any space that you have. You already don't have that much. And that actually reminds me, again, big white space here. White space basically makes me think, why is there that space? Is it because you didn't do enough? And I'm sure you did stuff, so just fill it up. Oh, the cardinal sin resume should only be one page. So, you know, from the get go, this looks really nice. It's nicely filled up. Actually, it looks like a research paper. This stuff over here kind of looks like an abstract, but you don't need two, just one. And the reason is because you've written so much. So actually the same thing that I highlighted that feels like an abstract, this isn't a scientific paper. You don't need to put so much. No one is gonna have time to read this due to adding norms and energy consumption, battery electric vehicles, and like no one's gonna read this. I like that you bolded some things, but look at everything else, it's just text. I'm gonna look at this and be like, oh God, I don't wanna read this. You could remove, I would say almost all of this. I personally like the two column format of a resume. So if you wanna keep it, that's okay, but you don't have to write so much. So I'm fairly confident you could fit all this in there. But let's actually look at some of the stuff you put in here. Okay, cool, I like that you put it's out of four, makes sense, out of 10. Again, I understand what you're saying now, that makes sense. I would say the same thing. I usually like to just put the months if you can. I do like that you put the cities. I don't know, feels kind of cool, right? You're like in Chennai, you're in West Lafayette. It gives you a personality, might, might help you stand out. Over here for experience, um, nice, it looks really nice. I don't think you need this calendar. It looks okay though. I don't think it's taking up extra space. So if you wanna keep it, that's fine. I don't think you strictly need it. Uh, let's read some of these bullets. Designed and developed component level diagnostics and electric vehicle, okay? Cool, I like that you bolded stuff. I don't think you need so many bullets. A recruiter is not gonna have time to read all of them. So again, maybe just pick one or two that are important and maybe cut one. So I haven't actually read this one. Maybe this one is important, but you know, maybe you can cut that one, you can cut this one. And that will also help you fit a lot of stuff in here. If you notice that you don't have enough space, again, it's all about priority. So pick the experience that really matters matters and just keep that. Again, from the get-go, nice, filled up, not too much white space, looks pretty good. I'm already kind of impressed it's filled up, so that is good. I like that you, okay, cool. I, again, very nitpicky. I don't think you need the word expected. 
right? Just put the date that you think you're gonna graduate. You don't need the word expected. Uh, cool, I like that you put it at a four. Nice, nice. Cool, technical skills, frameworks, courses, sounds good. Again, I have an eagle eye. There shouldn't be a space there. Be really, really careful with formatting. Like, it sounds like it might not matter, but I promise you, looks matter a lot. Coursework, okay, sounds good. I think it would be interesting if you put the coursework where you took it, right? Because you have two universities here. So I don't really know where you took what. So maybe put that under the university so I can tell how recent some of that coursework was. Cool, teaching assistant. Again, this is very nitpicky. I like to capitalize, keep it consistent so that A should be capitalized. Okay, cool. I don't like that everything is bolded, right? Only bold things that you want to emphasize. So if you want to emphasize that it was that you were a teaching assistant, then bold this, but then you know leave this stuff not bolded. Only use things to show that it's important. Little things like this, actually, this is a learning opportunity. If you notice only one word is on a new line, figure out a way to rephrase a sentence so you don't use that. Because if you notice, we've wasted this entire line of white space just for one word devices. And we could have saved that. Um, I think overall, you could have a lot more numbers in here. I see one right here, 76%, nice. Why don't you bold it, right? Make it bigger, draw my eye and attention to that. Make the recruiter's life easy. Same with here, you have negative one to one. Actually, I don't know if that's a cool number. I like these. 85 uh, for you know percentages are really good you see accuracy uh, make these bolded really draw my attention to them i think that will really help looks pretty good i'm assuming because i told them to blur out their name and stuff but again this seems like a pretty big heading i don't know if you need that much space just for your name and some contact info maybe you can save some space there again what is this out of i have no idea chandigarh india nice okay i'm not sure i go back and forth on this i don't know which one's more important the company, like Hey Coach, or what you were. Like for example, imagine this was Google or Microsoft. You'd want the recruiter's eyes to go to that. So you might wanna make Google bolded and then software engineer intern under it, not bolded. Maybe in this case, Hey Coach is not a well-known company. So it makes sense to draw your attention to, oh, they have internship experience as a software engineer, but something to think about. If you have a big word on your resume, Microsoft, Google, Netflix, you know, whatever, a well-known company, try to put that out there because any prestige points you can get, anything that's a proxy for your skill level can only help you. Okay. I'm not a fan of this like bolding the first thing i like to start all my bullets with a verb right not just ruby on rails or technology stack something like constructed and documented hey coaches operation look at these get rid of any nouns adjectives convert them to action verbs same thing here okay i like that you did initialized secure apis that just sounds so much more impressive cool you got this summer of code Okay, cool. I like these numbers. Again, you can highlight them. You got some projects. Cool. Is there anywhere I can find these? Recruiters love links. See if you can put a link here. Where is this web app? Put it on GitHub, host it somewhere. Cloth fits. Cool. I like that you bolded stuff. I like this. Improved loading times. You're kind of helping me see stuff. Search option. Improved loading times. But what about these numbers? Like that's what matters. Why is that not bolded with improved loading times? Cool. You got languages. Again, I feel like this whole section is taking way more space than it should. You know, maybe like all this can be one, just like programming languages, and then you have one sentence for that. Maybe libraries could be another sentence. This whole thing I think should be maximum two bullets. Also, I feel like there's way too much space between these, right? So let's like try to consolidate them. Consistently in top 5% of class. Okay, select that out of 6,000 candidates, computer science. Okay, cool. Everything else I think looks okay. All right, that was five resumes. Now let's talk about Squarespace. Squarespace offers robust analytics. so You can gain powerful insights into who's visiting your site and how they're interacting with your content. You're exposed to metrics like page views, traffic sources, and audience geography. You also have powerful blogging tools at your fingertips that allow you to share stories, photos, videos, and updates. And as you build out your personal brand and business, you can easily gather contributions with PayPal, Apple Pay, Stripe, and Venmo. And you have access to member areas where you can unlock new revenue streams for your business by selling access to gated content like classes, online courses, or newsletters. Check out squarespace.com today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Kapoor for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, let's do five more resumes. So this, I think, there's like, I know where you got this from. There's some resume builder, right? The one thing with that is you can't control the formatting fully. And so the first thing that draws my attention is there, why is there such a big white patch here, right? You could have put stuff in there. Maybe it's because this program doesn't allow you to, Maybe that means you need to do it on Word or LaTeX or something that you have full control over. I also go back and forth with the picture. You know, like a picture can only make you look bad. It can't really help you that much, right? Like if it's a bad picture, I'm biased already. I'm like, oh, this person doesn't look that good. Doesn't look professional. A really good picture, I'll be like, yeah, obviously they're submitting a good picture. It should be a good picture. So I usually tend to not like to put a picture because it can only adversely affect you. 
uh, but it's up to you. I do think though, in general, this heading is way too big, like a quarter of the entire resume, and that's crazy, right? Like there's just so much white space here, so much wasted space. So figure out some way to consolidate this. Uh, cool, you got software developer at STEM technology, working as a full tech, front end. Okay, again, I don't think you should put technologies just as bullets. You should be like working as a full stack developer using React.js, Redux to blah, blah, blah. And they come up with some numbers, percentages, show your impact. Don't just put bullet points of the technologies you used. We wanna know how you use them, why you use them, what you did with them. That's what actually matters. This is not bad though. Like if you wanna do something like this, like tech stack kind of in a smaller, but here you can notice it's like, it's as big as the first bullet. Like I actually don't even know what you did at Ed STEM technology. You worked as a full stack developer doing what? What did you actually build? The stuff that matters you haven't put in here. Really important thing, education should always go at the top. So this should be like, you know, even before work experience, uh, it's the first thing that should come up. And you got some certificates in here and some languages and interests. Okay, cool. Again, pretty big heading. I don't think we need such a big, we definitely don't need like software engineer. If you're applying to a software engineer role, obviously you're trying to be a software engineer, right? I don't think you need like all this, hey, I've done three years of this and here's my background. Here's what I'm gonna do. You know, like at the, sometimes at the top people put their one line goal, like looking for this, I'm a driven individual. That goes without saying, right? The interviews will show that if anything. I don't think it's gonna help you too much. Cool, you have just years here. I don't know, I, I always think it's kind of fun to put in the month, like when in 2020, right? So maybe put in the months, like May, June, July, it can only help you. Full stack engineer. I'm assuming what you've blurred out here is the actual place. So if that's true, then good. If not, definitely put that in there, that matters. And again, I think it matters more than the full stack engineer. So maybe it should come first in this line and that should be bolded and then full stack software engineer doesn't have to be bolded. You've spent a lot of time saying where you worked and I care less about that than what you actually built. So maybe you can nuke this entire bullet point, right? You joined and became a fundamental part of, again, you're telling me you're not showing me. What does that mean? Joined and became, show me that. Okay, cool. You accelerated the product with a nearly 1 million in sales. That's the only thing I care about then. Just say accelerated product launch to nearly 1 million in sales. That should be the bullet point. So I think you can get rid of some of these bullet points. It will save you space. Uh, let's read some of these other ones. Part-time, again, comes back to one bullet point. I don't know. I'm not particularly a fan of it. So if you can't have two or more bullets, then is it really even worth putting? Maybe you can just beef up some of your other experiences instead. Skills, languages, frameworks, cool. Okay, education again should not be at the bottom. This should be at the top. Especially in the US, I don't know about other cultures, but education matters the most. This doesn't mean you have to go to college. If you did a boot camp, you self-studied, whatever, put the coursework where you went, how you did at the very top of your resume. Pretty good, looks kind of filled up. I don't know if this is just a glitch, but this is technically two pages. So you know, maybe fix that. For some reason, still feels like there's white space, but I think that's like a formatting thing, if anything. Like look at this right column. Like why is it not fully right justified, right? That draws my attention to that blank space. So all of this should be at the right. You don't need graduation date written out. It's implied, so get rid of that. Same thing here. They were about the India, cool. You studied this, your Dean's honors list, nice. Again, what is this out of? I have no idea. Is it nine out of 10, 15, 20? There should be a space here. Maybe all of this can be one line, honestly. That would already make your resume not two pages. Built a website to improve the service quality and customer. Okay, how much? How much did you improve it by? What percentage? What exactly did you do? I don't care that you built the website to improve. Was that the goal? Did you succeed at it? Um, you know, those are the questions I'm kind of asking myself. Same thing. I would like these to be bolded. Draw my attention to the stuff that matters. I like that you have words like verbs though. Canvas, documented, maintained. That's good. Start strong. This annoys me, right? There shouldn't be a space here. There shouldn't be a space here. This feels like it's almost justified text because it just seems like there's just bigger spaces than there should be. I don't know. Maybe it's the font, but something to think about. Cool. I have no idea when you built these projects. There's no dates here. That kind of bothers me. Was this like 10 years ago? Was it three years ago? Was it recent? That matters. Uh, cool. I like the idea here that you're saying you're only a beginner in Java, but then what about the rest? Be consistent. Break it up into categories then. Proficient, beginner, acquaintance, or you know, whatever. I mentioned in my optimal resume video, it's really cool to break it up by lines of code. Did you write 10,000 lines of code, 5,000, 100, right? To give the recruiter a sense of how much do you actually know this. Interest, volunteer, and reading company. Honestly, I love that you're doing that, but I don't care. Unless you're gonna make it cool, like I mentioned I had beatboxing, but then make it its own section, add a bullet, talk about what you did there. That could be impactful, but just saying you're interested in it won't really do anything for you. This looks really good. I don't know if all of you can see why it looks really good, right? Just do a vibe check. This just looks better than some of the other resumes we've looked at. Why? It's filled. There's no white space. There's bold text. You're drawing my attention to numbers like success rate of 88%, engagement of 60%. 
uh, you know, increased satisfaction by 43%. I'm already like impressed. I don't know what you did. I haven't even read Partico Inc. I've just seen these big numbers and I'm like, wow, you're killing it, right? Good, university at the very top, nice. You broke it up, told me exactly what it's out of. I have an understanding of how good that is. You used the actual names instead of the numbers. I like that. Super net, you don't need that period there, right? Or at least you should put your period everywhere then, be consistent. Cool, I like that you put the name of the company and you bolded that instead of software engineer. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, honestly, everything looks good. This is a almost perfect resume, I would say. Let me let me actually try to give you feedback though. So, you know, there's always room for improval. Yeah, pretty good, honestly. All these make sense. I would say a it, it sounds a little bit too technical. Remember, recruiter is technical, but only kind of. They don't actually know what any of this means. It's cool to put it in there. It makes you sound smart, which is good. Again, it's all about looks, but maybe you don't need four bullets for this, right? Maybe you can just pick one or two because sometimes it can also seem like just like a lot, like, oh my God, I, I can't even get through this. Will you still probably get the interview? Yes. Is that all you care about? Yes. So you're okay, but just something to think about. Maybe you can add another experience in here because you can get rid of some bullets from the other one. But overall, this looks awesome, man. This is really good. Some minor tweaks and you're almost there. I'd give it like a 90%. Cool, similar vibe as the other one, but again, can you see how like for some reason, it doesn't seem as filled and it's very easy to know why. Like white space, white space, white space, white space, white space, white space, white space. You're, it doesn't look as filled. And there's a couple reasons for this. Obviously like the white space I mentioned, but also look at how not beefy these bullet points are. There's just one, one sentence for each one. There's not multi-sentence. It doesn't look as filled up. And so that's something to kind of think about. I like that you have links. I don't think this needs to stay here, right? I think you can just like kind of fit this in here in the same line. You're fluent in English, Hindi, beginner in French. An interesting fact, but honestly, I care about this education way more. So again, common theme, this should go at the very top. Skills and interests can actually go to the very bottom. So you could actually just switch those. If you don't have anything else to talk about, it's okay to have a bullet point of being a graduate teaching assistant, but I don't know if it's that impressive. This is where I would like to just put a little asterisk on your coursework. Like here, see, you have relevant coursework. So what are you for? Comp 189. I don't know which one it is. Let's say it's operating system. Just put a little asterisk and been like teaching assistant and then maybe one sentence of what exactly you did. I don't think you need a whole work experience for that. I'm sure you did other things that are cooler that you could kind of fit in there and it would be uh, more impactful. I gave you my quick fire feedback on each one. Hopefully that was helpful. Try to match yours to one of these, take the feedback to heart, improve yours and the best of luck in your recruitment journey. That's all I have till next time. Cheers.